G'day, this is Mr. Thompson, and this is the fourth and final video in the uh, series that I've put together about uh, modeling your trust bridge in Inventor. Now, in the first video, uh, we created a wireframe. Uh, in the second video, we converted that wireframe into an actual truss bridge with I-beams. Uh, in the third video, we analyzed the stresses um, using Inventor. Uh, and in this video, we're going to create a drawing, something a little bit like this. So uh, let me just close this one here so I can show you how to do it from scratch. All right, so I'm going to assume that you've already created your truss assembly uh, with the eye beams, so something like this, as shown in the second video. All right, so once we've got that, um, we're going to go File New, and again, so just show. Hang on, let me just cancel that. So again, File New from here, um, not from one of these. Okay, so File New, uh, and again, we're going to come down to the metric section of templates there. Um, okay, a part we created a part. When we did the wireframe, we created an assembly, um, or we turned it into an assembly when we added the truss beams, or the I-beams. Now we're going to do a drawing. Now there's a bunch of different types of drawings, different standards. Um, we're going to choose the ISO uh, standard, an international standard, and there's two different file types we could choose from, a DWG or an IDW. IDW is the inventor native file format, and that's the one I'm going to use. Uh, it's going to be a little bit smaller than a DWG. DWG is the file format for AutoCAD. Um, and um, so if you want more or increased compatibility with AutoCAD, I guess you could use the DWG file. Uh, but I'm working entirely in Inventor. So I'm just going to use the, I, the ISO.IDW. So double click on that. And all right, so there's my sheet. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is come and check the properties of my sheet. So I'm going to right click here on sheet one and edit sheet like that. And look, as it turns out, um, this is correct. Uh, I'm using an A3 size um, sheet of paper. So you might just want to check that that's right. And it's landscape. So I don't have to make any changes there. Um, all right, um, I'm going to check though what my dimensions are. So if I go to Manage and Styles Editor, like that, okay, and you can see I'm using default standard ISO. Now I can't change it there where I can, but it doesn't work. So, so that's the default standard. So I'm going to come down to the default ISO here, um, and I'm going to, I don't want millimeters, I want meters, because I'm building a, you know, a great big truss bridge. It wouldn't make sense to use millimeters. And my decimal marker, uh, in Europe, of course, they use a comma as the decimal marker. I want a period as the decimal marker. Uh, over here, I want leading zeros and trailing zeros. Um, so look, that's all good. I'm going to leave that all like that. All right, so save and close. OK, now um, let's have a look. Oh, oh, I want to put some information here in my um, title block. So the way to do that. Uh, is if I come up here to drawing to my drawing, and if I right click and I edit the eye properties there. So here I can put some information in here that'll appear down in the block here. So summary, uh, let's give it a title. I'll call it Truss uh, Bridge Drawing. Well, let's just call it Truss Bridge. Eh? Let's call it Truss Bridge. Uh, and if I apply, we can see that the title then appears down here. Um, designed by, so there's the author. So let me put Mr. Thompson. You can put uh, whatever you want, to, whatever your name is. You can put that there, and you can see now that appears down here. Um, company, well, I'm going to put my school. So I'm going to go Faith, uh, oh, I'll spell it correctly Faith Lutheran College Plainland. Plainland, like so and apply and so you can see i've started to fill this in down here now um, you could if you wanted to if you come over to status you can do uh, checked by and approved by and i guess if you were in a uh, engineering company you would have different people checking and approving uh, any drawing that you do um, i'm not going to use those so that'll do now look you can um, if you want to get clever you can create create your own custom title block there and you can put logos and things like that in there. 
I'm uh, just going to stick with the basics. So that will do me. All right. Now, um, I guess now we need, we're ready to place our um, assembly on the drawing. So the way we do that is we come up here to place views. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to place a base view. So your base view is your main view. Uh, so I'm going to click on that. Now it's put an end view. Uh, now I don't really want an end view. I'd rather, I think my main view would be a side view. So I'm just going to rotate that like that. There we go. So that's my, uh, that's my, I guess it's going to be my base view. Now also that's a bit large because I want to put a base view down here with an elevation on top and an end view on the side here and an isometric view there. This is not going to fit. So I'm going to come over here and change the scale. At the moment, at the moment, the scale is one to a hundred. Let me change it to one to 200. And that's a, that's a better scale for me. Okay. A couple of other things in here. Um, style. If I click here, that would hide, uh, well, it wouldn't show hidden lines, but I actually want to show hidden lines. So I'm going to keep that one selected. And here I can turn shading on or off. I'm going to leave shading off. So um, that's all the information I need there. So I'm going to go OK. And I'm just going to move my base view just by clicking on the, the border there and moving it. I'm going to put it down here somewhere. OK, now I'm ready to put some projected views in. So I'm going to click on projected and then I can just move up here. You can see I can put a top view. So I'll put that up there and I can put an end view. And I'll put that over there and I can come up here and I can place an isometric view. So I'll just put it uh, off to the side a bit. So I've got some room for dimensions like that. Now this is a bit cryptic. Uh, the way to actually create all those views that I've just defined is I now right click and create. So now I've created those views. All right, uh, the next thing to do is to dimension my drawing. So uh, I'm going to come over here under annotate and I'm going to dimension uh, my um, base view and my these two projected views. I won't put dimensions on the isometric view. Um, how to do that? It's pretty straightforward. Look, I'll only do a few and I'll show you a couple of little tricks, um, but uh, I'll just do um, a few of these and you can do the rest on your own. But basically we come up e over here and we click on general dimension. Of course, we can do these other sort of dimensions here as well, but you can play with those. So general dimension. So let, what if I wanted to know the total width of the bridge? So let, let me zoom in here. The total width of the, width of the bridge. So if I click from that side, to that side and then maybe zoom out a bit and now you don't want to put your dimensions inside your drawing if possible uh, you want to put your your dimensions outside the drawing there we go like that and now because I'm going to click OK because I set my default units to meters it's put that in meters and it's used all the conventions that I set up before in my style sheet or in my style now um, uh, actually, let me show you a couple of things here. What if I wanted to mention the distance between the centers of these um, eye beams here? Now, if I zoom in, that looks like a center line, but it's not. If I zoom right in, see, that's my eye beam. That's the outer edge of the eye beam, and that's the inside section of the eye beam. I really want to have a, a center line here. So let me show you how to do that. Um, often we use center lines for holes and uh, circular objects, but it's equally valid to put a center line into uh, something like an eye beam like this. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up to here and these are various different styles of center line I can use. This is the one that I want. I'm going to put a center line between two lines. So I'm just going to click on this line here and this line here, and it's created a center line. If I zoom out again, you can see it's created a center line that bisects those two lines. I'll do the same over here, there, and there is another center line. And the reason I did that was because I wanted to show that the different that the dimension between the center line of one eye beam and the center line of the next eye beam there is five meters. So if I come out here and there we go, that's labeled there. All right. Um, and equally, you could use that trick down here as well. You know, if I if I wanted to dimension the full dimension of this bridge here from that point there, all the way over to that point there, I find that that's 30.66. 
I'll put that down there like that. Um, but I actually designed my truss to be 30 meters wide, but that 30 meters for, was from the center line of that uh, truss, or that, not that truss, from the center line of that I beam to the center line of that I beam. So I could again, I could come, whoop, I could come right in here, zooming in, and I could put a center line between there and there. Okay, like that, zoom back out again. And I could come across and do the same on the other side. Just come across here and put a center line in between, let's see, a center line between there and there. There's another center line. So as you can see now, I can easily or more easily show that the design from center line to center line was actually 30 meters. Let's do that. So from there, to there and you might have noticed that I can sort of I can move and I can uh, zoom in between placing those sides of the center line if I wanted to show um, the width or the, the, the what do you call that the width the height the depth yeah of that uh, beam there so I can do that sort of thing I can do angles so again with the general dimension I can click on that line there and that line there and that shows an angle there so there we go um, all right and if you're not happy with those decimal places uh, you can go back and edit the site the style as i showed you in the beginning of the video all right so i think that's probably about all i need to show you um, you'll put a lot more dimensions in there a couple of conventions that i'll mention i've already mentioned that you're going to put your dimensions outside the drawing where possible not inside of course, this one here, it makes sense to put inside. Uh, these ones here, you notice I put them outside the drawing. You should dimension all of the key dimensions of your drawing, but you should not be dimensioning things twice. So for example, that 6.68 there, I wouldn't then do that same 6.68 dimension over here. So each dimension, it, you should only dimension once. All right, so I think that's about enough. Um, Hopefully this series has been useful and you've learned some stuff. Um, that's all.